Now I'm weaving the criss on a floor loom. The warp is threaded onto four shafts so that the ends don't bunch together when being lifted or lowered. The criss is woven in warp faced plain weave. The set, that is the number of threads to the inch or centimetre, must be worked out in advance so that the weft doesn't show on the surface of the band. Weaving's easy. The shed is changed by treadling. I will now weave a few picks. I'm weaving the criss on an 8 shaft table loom. The warp is threaded onto 4 shafts so that the ends don't bunch together when the shafts are lifted and lowered. To weave I raise shafts 1 and 2 and then shafts 3 and 4. The weft on the shuttle has run out so I'll demonstrate how to join in a new weft thread. I've wound a new weft onto the shuttle. First, change the shed, shafts one and three, and take the old weft through. Tug, and tug. And now we take the new weft through in the same shed. So there are two weft threads in the same shed. Now change the shed, beat. Beat, and beat hard because this then compacts the two weft threads in that one shed. Beat, take the shuffle through, pinch and tug, beat. As you can see, weaving's easy. I'll now weave a few picks so that you can see how quick and easy it is. Beat, pinch, tug, change shed. Beat, beat, pinch and tug, change shed. Beat, beat, pinch and tug. Beat, pinch and tug. Beat, pinch and tug. Let's take a closer look at the pick where I added in the new weft thread. Leave these two protruding ends until the band is finished and off the loom because the warp and the weft relax when not under tension. Then you take these two ends and tug slightly. The self edges of the band will pull in on both sides and you can then trim the ends close to the self edges. Then you can gently ease the band back into shape. The two ends will now be hidden inside the band and are invisible. I'm weaving the criss on a floor inkle loom which uses a circular warp. The warp is threaded alternately through a heddle so that one end is fixed and the other end can be moved down or up. This pattern is from the oldest Chris in the National Museum of Ireland and dates to 1918. Here I'm using two shades of natural wool from the Falkland Highlands. Unfortunately, I didn't have quite enough to finish the pattern. To weave, we change the shed like this, insert the shuttle and beat, take the shuttle through and pinch and tug to adjust the weft. Now change the shed again, insert the shuttle, beat, 
take the shuttle through, pinch and tug to adjust the weft. As you can see, weaving's easy and I'll now weave a few picks. This warp is threaded alternately through a hole and a long slot across the width of the heddle. I will now weave a few picks to show you how easy it is. I'm weaving a Chris using an unusual method. I saw a drawing of a man weaving a Chris using a circular warp and no equipment other than a stick of wood held by his toes which tensions this circular warp. I wanted to see whether or not it was actually possible. I made a circular warp. The pattern is from a Chris from Inish Moor made about 1948. Note that the edge of the band uh, is in black or dark navy and the weft is white and the weft shows as this rather attractive dotted pattern along the edge of the band. This is one I wove using my table loom. The weft thread is not wound onto a shuttle but made into a convenient ball and held in the hand. To make the shed I have to pick up the warp ends that should appear on the surface and the warp ends on the surface have to be dropped to the back. This is much easier to show than to explain. I will now pick up the threads for the first pick. I have to hold the warp ends between two fingers to separate the layers. Look at the top layer and the bottom layer. When weaving, I need to focus on the warp ends at the fell of the weaving. The fell is the top edge of the band at the last weaving pick. I will now weave a few picks. So I pick and drop. Pick and drop. Pick and drop. Pick and drop. Then pick and drop. And I have to do this right across the warp and it does get a bit quicker with practice. <laughs> Pick and drop, 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 right? Then pick and drop, pick and drop, pick and drop and pick and drop pick and drop Oops. pick and drop pick and drop pick and drop last group now pick and drop pick and drop, pick and drop, pick and drop. I've now taken the first pick. Now to adjust the tension 
I have to pull both sets of warp ends and although it looks a bit sort of bumpy it's what you need to do is to pull the weft across that tightens the warp ends across the band and if there are any loose warp ends like that one should in fact be on the bottom there we go you can pull them individually to adjust the tension this was quite a learning curve for me because I'm so used to having a shuttle uh, to beat and also for all the warp ends to be at the same tension and this actually is not needed when you're weaving using this method. Having selected the, that first pick we now have to take the weft thread through the shed that, and we're now ready to start again. However I don't think this method was used because the simple addition of a loop of thread around one warp layer actually halves the weaving time. I'll demonstrate. There's a loop of thread around the next warp layer. Pull it up and there is the next pick selected. So this was an interesting exercise for me. I found it difficult at first to keep an even beaten width, but that would come with practice. I was surprised to see that it's not necessary to have all the warp ends at the same tension, which is a general rule in weaving. This was something I had to unlearn. My piece of weaving shows my progress as I practice this method. It's very slow. I'm now going to show you weaving on the foot. This method was the traditional method of weaving Chris on the Aran Islands. One end of the warp is looped around the foot, the other is held in the left hand. The weft thread is not wound onto a shuttle, but is made into a convenient ball and held in the hand. One set of warp threads are threaded through string heddles held in place by a stick, or in this case a pencil. The start of the band, once weaving has progressed, the ends are plaited. The first warp shed is made by lifting the heddles and ensuring the warp is separated. You then take the weft and pass it through to the other side. To make the second shed I have to pick up the warp ends that should appear on the surface and the warp ends on the surface need to be dropped. It's much easier to show than explain. So I will now pick up the threads for the, the second pick. I have to hold the warp ends between two fingers to separate the layers. Look at the top layer and the bottom layer. Now I am picking up one from the bottom and dropping one from the top. Pick up one from the bottom drop one from the top, pick up and drop, pick up and drop, pick, drop, pick, drop, pick, drop, pick, drop, pick, drop, pick and drop. So that's the next pick selected. I am now ready to make the next shed by lifting the pencil and heddle rods. I'll do this to one side so that you can see what happens. I carefully lift up the shed, use this finger to clear any threads that get caught and there is the next shed with my finger uh, holding it open. And now I need to do a bit of juggling work to take out my finger from the previous shed. Then pull it down and there is the next shed waiting for the weft. <laughs> 